Welcome aboard to Denver Academy of Torah Airlines, the official airline of the Denver Jewish Modern Orthodox community for 25 years. We know that you have many choices when it comes to your Jewish education, and we appreciate that you have chosen us to guide you on your journey. As always, our first priority is your safety and well-being. So before we depart, we will be giving a brief safety presentation. First, please tuck in your shirt. To tuck in your shirt, slowly slide your hand along the edges of your shirt inside the waistband of your pants. Place the end of your belt strap through the buckle loop and pull in the opposite direction until it fits snugly. Place the prong through the hole in the strap to keep it in place. We recommend that you keep your shirt tucked in at all times throughout your flight. While enjoying your stay with us, it is important to remain seated at your desk in an upright position. U.S. law requires that students comply with all signs, bells, and crew member instructions. There are two laboratories available for your convenience located on each floor of the plane. FAA regulations strictly prohibit tampering with, disabling, or destroying laboratory paper towel dispensers. Violations of these regulations may result in detention. For your convenience, we have provided a safety instruction manual located in your cubby. Please refer to the safety instruction manual and familiarize yourself with all of its contents, including Rashi, so that you will know what to do in all circumstances. In the event of an emergency, phylacteries will drop down from the overhead compartment. Place the tefillin shell roche on your head, ensuring that it's positioned where the hairline begins above the forehead, or at least where the hairline used to begin, and terminates at the point where the baby's soft spot ends. This spot is normally found directly above the point where the front of the upper ear is attached to the head. If your soft spot is not located at this point, please push the call button and ask your local Orthodox rabbi for proper placement. And remember, please, Always put on your own tefillin before helping others. In the event of a water landing, please follow all emergency procedures. If you are seated in an exit row, a staff will be located in the overhead compartment. Please raise the staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and split it in order to provide for a safe and dry landing. A life vest will be located under your seat cushion. Remove the vest and place it over your head. Make the bracha located on the card in the seat pocket in front of you and be sure to kiss all of the strings. In the event of an evacuation, exit doors are located at the front and back of the plane as well as in each of the rooms on the first floor. Emergency slides are available but should only be used during recess. Please also be careful to have only one person at a time on the slide and keep all debris off of the slide surface. From all, all of us here at Denver Academy of Torah, we, we thank you for being here with us. us. And now, here is a word from our captain. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard Denver Academy of Torah Airlines. We will be cruising this evening at 25,000 feet as we look at the rich history of Denver Academy of Torah over the past 25 years. Every day at Denver Academy of Torah, we inspire students to be Torah observant academically interested and inspired students who are striving to be our next generation of innovators. We look forward to the journey with you and hope we have a safe and smooth flight. Enjoy the journey. Uh, we were sitting in the sukkah uh, this was uh, 27 years ago and uh, the topic came up again so as we said after Sukkot we're going to um, call and set up a meeting and see if there is interest in starting another school. We felt very strongly it needed to be a Zionistic school and something that was very strong in both secular and Judaic learning. Right, we wanted a school that would have pretty strong academics as well as um, a solid uh, Jewish education. I think that was our goal, to have a, a kid that understood that what a gift Israel is, what a blessing it is to um, have that gift, because all generations previous to ours as parents didn't have that. Um, what an opportunity it gave, gave our, 
our students and to be able to contribute to society, whichever, whatever aspect of society you wanted to in a full, successful way. I'd like to welcome you all here this morning to the dedication of the Denver Academy of Torah. As a philosophy, Denver Academy of Torah believes that we teach our students to see the world through a lens of Torah. They look at science and math and halacha and Torah all together, understanding how it all fits together into the world of Hashem's creations. And we know that that means that they can become leaders and innovators in the world of Judaism, as well as at any boardroom or any job that they choose to pursue, because it's really about how do we apply our learning and our Jewish learning throughout our lives. The only really a uh, goal that we have is to raise healthy happy Jewish adults and um, what that means is really uh, that is the definition of, of modern orthodoxy is to be able to incorporate everything 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 the entire environment into Avodah HaKodesh into serving Hashem. What I think is unique about Dot is a very unique place is that on the one hand we have a philosophy that's fully embracing of the modern world. Um, both halves of the day, the general studies half, the Torah study half, are seen as being in concert, as be seen as being integrated, both, are, both, are, both have equal importance, and yet at the same time I think the students get a clear message that the Torah half of the day is what drives our life, is what informs our life, informs our decision making as Jews. Um, and for that reason, the, we, we don't shirk anything when it comes to the skills, the Torah skills um, that, that they're given. It's a rigorous Torah education, um, and putting those two halves together, I think, is very unique. On the one hand, to have a curriculum that is as worldly, as open-minded as we are, and yet to be very, very skills-based and very rigorous in terms of the Torah that we teach, um, you know, really... Gemara, Rashi, Tosfot, whatever, we, we, we hold nothing back, you know. We, we give them the most rigorous Torah that we can. I, I think uh, we, we, it's a fully um, Torah-based education in the sense that it's not about Torah, it is Torah. We're not teaching what Torah would be like, we're teaching Torah itself. Um, and those two don't always go together in every school, and I, I think Dot's done a great job of integrating those two halves. Like, we call ourselves a modern Orthodox school, but I think the way that the school is run really defines that. Um, based on the fact that we have a dual curriculum and our teachers are um, really like putting emphasis on both the secular and the Ju Judaic studies and they equip us with computers and ways to be part of like the modern like 21st century world um, and really like equip us with skills to be Jews and to keep our Judaism with us when we leave the high school but really be incorporated in the world and do whatever we want whether that's become a doctor or um, a lawyer, anything that we really want to do. Our thoughts were that if you had a good sense of your Jewish, your Jewish identity and your secular identity and a love of Zionism and didn't put them on like a coat you wear for Shabbos or you wear for weekday, you put on a different hat. If, if you were in a, a full Jewish Zionist identified individual with a good sense of self-esteem, the world is yours. Zionism is embedded in the identity of the school and in the way our students are um, initiated towards developing a tremendous love for the state of Israel, for the people of the land of Israel. From the very beginning of ninth grade, they are anticipating and working towards their immersion trip to Israel which comes every spring in ninth grade and in in their Hebrew language classes and in their Torah studies classes there is just a constant refrain of the importance of the state of Israel and our continued commitment and devotion to it. So Denver Academy of Torah does focus on uh, Tzionut, on religious Zionism and uh, it, it's permeated throughout the Judaic studies and in the hallways you see it and when the Wadochi route have been here it's very clearly evident and even without them the Judaic studies teachers, the Mude Kodesh teachers very much integrate uh, a love of, of the land of Eretz Yisrael, the state of Eretz Yisrael, the country of Yudat Yisrael. And here we learn a lot in our relationship to Israel, we learn a lot about the prime ministers of Israel and we like 
learn about a lot of the history for Israel and actually in social studies right now we are learning about um, the like the Israel history kind of and I, I, I like learning about it a lot. One of the things that happened in the lower school that gave, gave me a real connection to Israel is that they brought in Benot Sherut which are um, girls from Israel who were who were uh, younger and would come to America instead of uh, going to the army and they were and they were great and they were involved in the school day and they would really they would really uh, preach uh, a love for Israel and it was very infectious. One of the things that we had hoped and, and had seen in the formation of DOT is that uh, having um, Hebrew taught in Hebrew was a uh, big uh, thought that we had at the beginning of the uh, um, of our time at, at Dot. Um, it was the Ivrit Bivrit, and there were programs that we actually sent the teachers to to help uh, help learn about that. We start in kindergarten with a almost immersive. Judaic Studies program and continue that throughout fifth grade and then continue Hebrew language daily until our students graduate. And our students have, they don't only have an ability to converse with their teachers in Hebrew, but it strengthens their connection when our ninth graders go on their Israel immersion trip, they speak in Hebrew. When our students leave after high school and potentially go to Israel for a gap year, they can converse in Hebrew and it gives them a much greater connection to Israel and the people. When I see the children, always it's in Hebrew, whether that's in the school building or outside of the school building. And what's incredible is they really start, after usually about two years, they start thinking in Hebrew, um, which is really, really incredible. Um, not only does this make Hebrew speaking fine, so we have children who will go to Israel or will have Israelis visit, and they can fully understand and translate for their parents, um, but it also very much um, um, influences their ability and their quality of learning in all Judaic areas. That this message is heard at school is reflected in what we see in the results. That we see our kids going off to yeshivas in Israel. That we see our kids joining the army in Israel. That we see kids marrying the two and going to Hezder programs in Israel. That children who go to Israel with their families are translating for their parents the Hebrew that they're hearing on the street because they speak it and understand it fluently thanks to the Ivrit Bivrit program that we have at the school, those are the greatest signs that in the real world that the message is getting through. That that is our home, this is our language, that is where our aspirations are, and that is where we all hope to ultimately end up. I gotta say that that really has fostered and kindled that love for Israel um, through all of its programs, through all of its ideals. Um, and just being able to move to Israel with that passion that Dot helped me gain is just such a, such a great thing. When we started with our Israel trip, many schools look at having an Israel trip as a culminating experience, and we put it firmly in our ninth grade in the middle of the spring semester to allow students to spend time really building up for this trip and then building off this trip for three years. We have had students who have chosen to serve in the IDF, to do Shevet Lumi, to make Aliyah on their own, and very often they reflect back to some experience on their Israel immersion trip, or on a program in school with something connected to Israel that really solidified for them this spark to want to live in Israel. I think one of the coolest things for our students is when they're able to engage with our alumni who have chosen to move to Israel. On our Israel immersion trip last year, we had the experience to go to Shifra Brandt's swearing-in ceremony. The energy from these soldiers who are serving in the army, and Shifra has chosen to serve in one of the first female combat units in Karkal, and the experience the students had of being able to be there and see someone who they knew from Denver being sworn into the Israeli army was super powerful for them. It created a deeper connection to what it is that our alumni are choosing to pursue as they move off into their lives.
One of the hallmarks of the education at Denver Academy of Torah is our teachers really encourage our students to learn through doing. Not just through reading, not just through writing, not just through seeing, but actually doing. Engaging in the subject matter that they are learning with their hands, with hands-on experiential activities. The philosophy of the experiential education is really thinking about how learning happens in many different forms and through different experiences, not just the teachers at the front of the room lecturing, student takes notes, student takes tests, but really more through the forms of actually being able to have access to experts in the field, have access to just answering um, questions and curiosities, but more through feeling, exploring, dissecting, serving. Sometimes it's raking leaves for an organization to kind of get a better idea of their needs and their mission and sometimes it's it's actually doing labs in science and uh, we really try to build in um, a lot of opportunities not just for seniors who go to internships but even from freshmen who have the opportunity to ask interesting questions and do research projects around that through scope and um, through our freshmen and sophomores who start going on field trips and our juniors who get to pick an organization of their choice that they're passionate about, that they care about, and serve with that same organization all year to really build a relationship and get to know them better and to really truly come to that point where they're thinking like, what does this mean to me? What is my role in the world? And so all of that kind of wrapped up and supported by teachers and classes is what we mean when we say experiential education. This past fall we went to New Mexico and that it was really enjoyable to just get to learn about the, um, the culture in New Mexico and Jewish history in New Mexico. Uh, we visited the George O'Keefe Art Museum so we really just do a lot of educational trips and we bring that back into our learning by doing the IDOT Expos after, after immersion when we get back to school and we really, it's a very cohesive um, learning experience so we remember what we learn and we enjoy it and it's really an experience that you can't get unless you're a dot. My most memorable experience so far has been Keystone which is a trip the seventh graders take. Um, we go to Keystone Science School and it was really fun because I got to be with all my friends but at the same time I was learning a lot of stuff and I felt very like just like I was exploring the rest of the world and I got to see a lot of things that I wouldn't see at home and I still was with my friends so I got to learn and have fun at the same time. In Rev Noam's class we're learning halacha and we're learning ben adam l'chavero, so how to act between man and man. So he gives like real life situations where like job interviews or if people make you angry and like we bring up things in the class like situations that would, we would be in and he gives us like the halachic approach to it so that we can incorporate it into our own lives. Looking at Derech Eretz, Derech Eretz Kadma La Torah, it has to come before everything because the way that we treat one another is the mainstay of who we are as a people and who we are as human beings. It's about interaction and if we don't teach the kids how to interact properly with one another, whether it be with peers, with adults, with people younger than them, then we're really missing out on half of what we're doing here. Well, I was first introduced to Derek Eretz. Um, when I came to a teacher's meeting at the beginning of school and they were talking about what makes the school stand out from um, other schools and why is it different and why is it a unique place to work and, and to teach and to learn and um, that word kept coming up, Derek Eretz, Derek Eretz, um, but it was the first time I heard it and as more people were talking I got the idea that it had to do with having good character quality qualities and that that was so important at the school and that they wanted the kids to really have that as a foundation for everything that we learn and, and do um, but I wondered about that word and it, Derek Harris is all I was hearing and I thought that was an actual person and that it was a person who had really outstanding character and I'm like well where is he is this somebody I should know about our staff is made up of teachers that are passionate about their content areas being passionate about it and being an experienced professional educator allows our teachers to step into their classroom and present material to students and create a learning environment that really brings students to the highest level uh, there's really good teachers here at DOT 
they like teaching and if you get something wrong, they help you do better. Like the teachers are positive, they want you to learn, they want you to success, and they want you to have a good life in the future. All of the teachers have different um, ways of doing things. Like some might be strict, and some might be a little bit lenient. And I usually rather the strict ones because I learn more from them. So I'd say the teachers I taught are pretty good. We have a faculty here that supports one another. We are always finding ways to help each other, to make connections across curriculum between Judaic subjects and secular subjects, amongst Judaic subjects, amongst secular subjects, always finding a way to um, just be there for each other. Our faculty and staff at Denver Academy of Torah is phenomenal. I came in, like I said, a year and a half ago, and I was new. And everybody just, you know, kind of put their arms out, put their arms around me, and um, brought me in to the family here. Our teachers are incredibly committed. They are here early, they stay late. Sometimes I see teachers here in the evenings. Um, they help each other. They help each other to a degree that I have not seen in another institution. If a teacher is sick, if a teacher has had um, anything, any type of mishap come up that um, pre prevents them from being in the classroom, another teacher is there and ready to step in as long as they're not you know, committed to other students at the time and that is something that just doesn't happen everywhere. Everyone in the school wants to help everyone else. I think that the roles sort of get blended because we all, it's a small school, and we all are seeking you know, the best for the school, for the students, for the parents, for the community. Um, and the ultimate goal is that we have a school, you can't have a community without a school, and this school needs to frame the community that we live in. And so the staff and the teachers and the, all the parents that come in and volunteer, we all strive to make this place the best it can be. Over the last 15 years, um, I've seen Denver Academy of Torah grow in its um, population, both in terms of staff, staff and in terms of, of students. Um, one thing I've seen though that stayed really consistent is, is the, the warmth, the love, the, the true desire for teachers to kind of connect with the students and with each other. Because of our size, we really are a family, and that means that we fight sometimes. But um, most of the time, we're just uh, we're just all together, and we're brothers and sisters. And we come into school every day, like so incredibly excited to see everyone, and to learn really from all our teachers, who are role models to us, and they guide us um, into who we want to be in life. And it's really an incredible atmosphere to be in, and I'm very lucky to be in it. One of the things that I love is when families come into school and they immediately know that this is their home because they walk around and they see happy, thriving children. They see children who are excited to learn about Judaic studies and that they're passionate about it and that like they're not they're they're not just having the information pushed at them that they're really engaging with it and they're taking it on. When we look at where we stand at 25 years, it comes through the, the work of founders and builders and dreamers and visionaries. We are thankful to everyone who had those visions 25 years ago and we are thankful to each person today who helps to continue to build what our school is and who our community and school will become. As we continue to build this dream and vision, each one of us plays an important role. We play roles of support through volunteerism, through financial contributions, through being a voice in the community, through sending our children to the school. We work together to create a rich and robust Denver Academy of Torah. Thank you so much for your partnership. Happy 25th anniversary to the Denver Academy of Torah. Happy 25th anniversary to the Denver Academy of Torah. Happy 25th anniversary to Denver Academy of Torah. Happy 25th anniversary to Denver Academy of Torah. Happy 25th anniversary to the Denver Academy of Torah. Happy 25th anniversary Denver Academy of Torah. Happy 25th anniversary to Denver Academy of Torah. Happy. 25th anniversary Denver Academy of Torah. Happy 25th anniversary to Denver Academy of Torah. Happy 25th anniversary to the Denver Academy of Torah. 
Happy, Happy 25th, 25th anniversary, anniversary, Denver Academy, Academy of, of Torah. Torah. Happy anniversary.